welcome to Al Bell! Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is yours. You want to grab it? Oh, yeah. Uh, that, my friend, you know what that's called? It's called a tropical itch. So, Al Bell. Oh, you know what? Al Bell. How rude of me. I did not toast. We cannot begin without a toast, proper toast. Let me get my lazy arse up. This is, wow. Cheers. Cheers. This is my first podcast. This is your very first episode? You're my first guest. Oh my God. That's so awesome. That's so cool. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Num, 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 Oh, num. yes. That's a good mic check right there. Mm. What's in it? That's, or, that's kind of on the sweet side, huh? Oh, yeah. I love it. I love on the sweet side. Big time. Oh, I aim to please. Okay. You know what's in there? We've got uh, 151 Demerara rum okay. from Guyana, which is where my family is from. Yeah. All right. We've got, uh, got some bourbon. A little boule. Ooh. We've got, I threw in a shot of Eldorado 12. Uh-huh. And I threw in, nope, that's the other one. Malibu? No, that was peach schnapps. Okay. It's directly from the UK. I've had yeah. it for 22 years. Yeah, wow. I, that's how much I drink peach schnapps. But every once in a while, it comes up. So the tropical itch, that's what it is. This is, wow. I'm honored. I continue to be honored. Aww. What if I chug this thing down in like five minutes? You'd be... Trash, <laughs> you're trash because it's 151 proof, right? Yeah, but I can't taste the alcohol. Is it in there? Is it down there? You. Is it down there? It's in there. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> right. Oh, listen, you want to hear your intro? Mm. What makes for a great comedian? Most people say you just have to be funny. However, the ones who connect with their audience can become legendary. My guest checks both of those boxes, and in addition to being incredibly interesting, she has a natural and compelling stage presence. If you haven't seen her perform, you can check her out on Instagram at Al Val Comedy or TikTok for upcoming shows. Please welcome Al Val. Wow. Hey, you at home, what's up? Oh my goodness. <laughs> I wrote it myself. That's really cool. Yeah, thanks. Thank you so much. What was it that you said that was like... It was a bit hyperbolic, but I, but uh, regardless, I appreciated it. Something about legendary. <laughs> I said, I said, listen, I didn't say you were legendary. I said okay. you have the, uh, you know, the, the potential to become legendary. Oh, don't put that pressure on me. <laughs> it's <that> too much pressure. <laughs> it's too much pressure. <laughs> so tell me, what have you been up to? I've been, uh, I've been changing genders. I don't know. Oh, yes. Happy anniversary. <laughs> Happy anniversary. Yeah. Congratulations. Congratulations. My one year anniversary of hormones on April 8th, a few days ago, a couple of days ago. So, so how's that been? It's been good. It's been awesome. It's been a delight. My skin is so smooth. Yeah. Um, all the changes are things that I welcome wholeheartedly. Like I am losing some muscle mass. Right. And I'm beginning to realize how much weaker I've become. Mm -hmm. Like I had to carry an amp to a band audition yesterday. Right. And I had to take breaks every 20 meters carrying this huge amp. Well, how far away did you park? Or did you take transit? I took the TTC. Oh, wow. Yeah. Right, right. Like a broke ass, jive ass. <laughs> <laughs> Where was it? Uh, it was on St. George. It was like St. George Station right there. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. So I didn't really have to go even that far, but like... I don't know, but it's it just points to just how weak, how much weaker. Whereas before, you wouldn't have had any issue. Wouldn't have had a problem. Right? Did you I fucking hoisted it like a? I would have carried it like a like a woodsman, <laughs> right. uh, like an '80s guy with a boombox, an obnoxiously big thing on my shoulder. Radio Rahim would be the person. You, do you know? You, you, that's a movie Spike Lee made called "Do the Right Thing." You should watch that one. It's good. Radio Rahim had the same. Type of deal. I'm white. Yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> I don't know these movies. So, so um, I guess what I was going to say is, do you work out now or did you before? I did. Yeah? yeah. I worked out a bunch. Like how? What what sort of working out did you do? Weights? Did you yeah. yoga? Did you do? I played a lot of soccer. 
So I, that's, I got my cardio in there and then like, you know, weightlifting like twice a week just to maintain kind of thing. I used to, I used to be shredded too. You were ripped. Yeah. Really? Wow. But now my abs are going away. Right. I'm slowly losing my muscle mass. It's still up there. I was thinking, um, like, even though, um, my, my hormones, since I've been taking them for a year, the levels, like the estrogen's really high and the testosterone's really low. Yeah. I was thinking it's kind of funny what testosterone is left. I think just retreated in my body up to my delts and is like, hold here, man. <laughs> everything else is getting softer and weaker, but my shoulders are still like, oh! right. So yeah. do you like that? You're not like that. It is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like it when in some angles of some pictures, you know, if I wear a tank top and I just look like I look intimidating. Right. You know? Right. Like yelling in the front row, like, laugh, motherfuckers. <laughs> it's scary. <laughs> I don't want people to laugh out of fear, you know? By the way, move your microphone quicker. I mean, closer. Yeah. Not quite. That way we can know, hear your awesome voice. Is it comfortable? Yeah, I can. Oh, there we go. Is that better? Yeah. Now sound, I can hear me. Now you sound good. <laughs> now you sound better. You'd think a comedian of 15 years would know their way around a microphone. You sound good. Do I? Yeah. You sound good. Thanks. <laughs> So, so I uh, I watch your Instagram and I think you're hilarious. I really do. I'm a fan. I'm a big fan. You are so. I said in that intro, you're interesting. You're just very funny, and I think that's what makes a really amazing comedian. Is you have to be interesting, and your stories are really great. Like, what would you say is your style? Your autobiographical. You you're not like um, you don't just tell one liners. You're not blue. You're, yeah. You know. What would you say? How would you I define mean, a comedy? It's not, yeah, it's not on the observational side so much as it is, it's super personal. Right. So a lot of my stories are, especially the past three years since I came out, my stories are all about my journey and how, you know, I used to live as like this bro -y Chad dude. Yeah. And now I'm, now I'm trying to be a lady to the best of my abilities. <laughs> and, <clears throat> and just like, it's, it's. That's kind of the the place where I speak from, and I don't I don't presume to be woke at all. I don't presume to speak for anybody but myself, and I think that's the most important thing about my act is that I don't I'm not sanctimonious. I don't preach to people. I'm right. just like this is my very human experience. Mm -hmm. I'm clumsy. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm afraid, but these are all perfectly accessible human experiences. Being terrified and embarking on this crazy new journey, not knowing where you're going to end up. It's all like it's all easy to relate to on a human level right right yeah right where was your first gig uh london ontario at the rockwater barbecue and grill <laughs> oh which God. is closed now right it used to be at the gallery and mall it was london's funniest person right and i remember my style back then i was 18 years old <laughs> and i knew i wanted to do oh boy Did you hear that? <laughs> gosh <don't... laughs> you see this? Yeah, okay. I thought you just got startled by the parrot there. I was like, it sounded like it was the, the whole parrot. time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you were you performed in London for the first time? Did you grow up in London? Um, no, I went to school. I went to Western in London. Oh, you did? Yeah. So I grew up in Whitby, which okay. is like forty five minutes outside of Toronto. For anybody who wants to know, right? Um, and uh, it was London's funniest person competition. Right. I was eighteen years old. I knew I wanted to do stand up out of high school. Right. And I went up there and like tanked for three minutes, but I think I got one chuckle somewhere in there. And that to me was like, I was away off to the races. I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to do this the rest of my life. Hell yeah. That guy gets it. Right. right <laughs> Meanwhile, right. he was probably like, he was looking at his phone, just chuckling at something else. I was like, I don't this think guy. 15 years ago, there was no phone. Was there? It wouldn't have been, it it would've would've been a flip phone. It wouldn't have been worth. It wouldn't have been worth looking at back then. Yeah, I know? mean, he was he was probably laughing at something on his Motorola Razor or whatever. <laughs> do you, do you remember those? Oh, of course. Yeah, of yeah, course. Yeah. It was so such a big deal when you saw someone with a razor. You're like, wow. You thought it was like Star Trek or something. Super cool. Really yeah. modern. Don't cut yourself on that razor. <laughs> <laughs> I loved my razor. It was awesome. What about now? You know, is there anyone you see successfully doing comedy that inspires you to keep at it? Because, you know, your material is, you know, autobiographical mm -hmm. in a certain way. Is there anybody else that you look at and you're like, wow, you're awesome. 
you know, not to, not because of you know their their gender or whatever it might be, but because they're just a great storyteller, and that's kind of a big part of your writing, right? It's how do I tell my story in a compelling way, and where people can see the lens that I have and laugh at the same time? Is there anybody that you can name? This is the longer answer. Okay. So uh, I think the current trend in stand up seems to be really deeply personal stuff that almost uh almost balances on the tragic like there's a lot of really there's a lot of trauma sharing kind of thing where it's like this these are the hardships that i've overcome and this is how i come out on top of them there's comedy seems to be to have a heavy-handed uh sad edge to it nowadays right like Nanette, when Nanette came out, and that was super famous, Hannah Gadsby. Okay. For she had this whole chunk in the middle that was like 10 minutes long where there were no more jokes. She like, she broke the ice, she killed it for like half an hour. Mm-hmm. And then there was a 10 minute chunk where she talked about like the the assaults that she suffered as as a lesbian woman and like the the shame that she experienced. She got really dark and like no way out. She made it really tense in the room. Right. And just talked about her trauma for a bit and then broke past that and, like, gave you sort of the moral of the story and then brought back the comedy and why it all mattered. Why it would matter that she would talk about this kind of stuff. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then we have Bo Burnham doing Inside. And now we have Jared Carmichael. I haven't seen his special yet, but I hear that he really strips it down and gets really personal and vulnerable. Right. There's a vulnerability to comedy nowadays. Right. And that's sort of the way the pendulum is swinging. It's like really rip open your chest and show people your sadness, who you really are kind of thing. Right, right. So that said, I don't think I'm directly influenced by any one of those people. I mean, Bo Burnham is, is – you watch – I watch Inside and I'm like, I'll never be that level of genius. And it hurt. Isn't that the worst? When yeah. you see someone, you're like, yeah, I'll never be that good. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But, you know, the point isn't necessarily to measure yourself and say, I want to be that good. You just got to be yourself, tell your own story, and that should be, that should be in theory enough. Yeah, right? but exactly. How and, is it for us to do that? Right? Yeah. And that's why I think um, it's, and that's a harder question to answer because I, at this point, 15 years in the game, I've already established my voice. And I know, I know what I want to say. I know how I want to say it. I know my delivery. I know my joke writing. I really know myself on stage. Right. And so um, it just happens to coincide. My, my whole personal level of sharing just happens to coincide with the trend, luckily. Right. right. And uh, what people find it so interesting is that nobody really has a story like mine out there right now. Right. And there aren't a lot of trans comedians out there who who share my same experience or are at any particular. They're all kind of climbing. Right. There aren't any famous trans comedians that I know of. Right. So what makes you want to share your story so much? I, you know, there's always that thing where, why would you want to be that vulnerable? Like, why would you want, what is it for you that is gratifying or, you know, allows you to be that vulnerable? Because it's not an easy thing, especially, you know, I think the great thing about stand-up comedy, especially, is that it's one of the last frontiers of free speech. Mm-hmm. You can just go up there and say whatever you want. It could you could stink, you could be really great, but you can still go up there, open mic night, say whatever you want, and you could sink or swim. Yeah. But you still have that opportunity to talk about anything you want. But I'm always curious to know, like, what is it that makes you want to talk about something that's so personal and share that with everybody? I think it's this deep need to feel um, like I mattered somehow in the world. Right. This is like the legacy that I want to create. And um, while I do have a nihilist streak and I believe that, you know, you, we're just here and we die and that's kind of it. Right. And life is what you make of it. Whatever meaning you prescribe to it is your own. Right. But I like, I don't, this is how I choose to feel like I mattered. By, by I just want to be understood and I want to be heard and I want to feel seen. Mm-hmm. And I spent so long running away from that right that i guess this is all just like a a slingshot opposite direction reaction to all that that like finally now that i'm starting to like be honest with myself i kind of want to share that feeling outwardly and i am still discovering things about myself as i'm sort of 
speaking about them at the same time. Right. It's it's like I forgive me for the cliche, but it is therapeutic to like go out on stage and like hash out some of the like I've I've a few stories about how I was catcalled and then when the guy saw my face he was like ugh and then rode away. <laughs> what was he on a horse? Where, where, he was on a bike. Oh. <laughs> was he on a horse? Yeah, he was a horse cop. He was like, "Telly ho." <laughs> <laughs> okay. So he rode off. Yeah, so um there's that story. There's 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 a story about coming out to somebody that I love and having them say some really cruel stuff to me. Right. So it's so I do personally and selfishly even use comedy as this catharsis in a way to like triumph over the bullshit the crappy things that have happened to me right it's my way of taking those awful experiences back and and triumphing over them because like i've made a whole room of people laugh i've connected with people i've shared something really deeply personal about myself and like i've created joy out of a shit situation i think you're amazing (laughs) i do i honestly god so what were you like in you know so grade 10, that's when you started doing stand-up, you said, right? Mm. Is that right? In grade no. 10, you started doing something. I've already, listen, I am a lightweight. so Really? Yeah, I do not drink as much as people think. Uh, then I can slow down. If it, I don't want you to have to like... No, 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 no. It, <laughs> it is my pleasure because I never get to hang out with anybody and, and drink. Yeah. Never. I, I rarely ever. I'm always working. This room is such a hardcore hang room, it is, too. Dude. It is. It's cozy. You come here to hang. It's not cold. Is it? Is it the room temperature? No, right I'm good. Okay, you're low maintenance. Good vibes only in this room. Good, good, good. <laughs> I was so ex- I was so happy when you said you liked the room. I was. I'm dazzled by this. I was sincerely. Wor- I was worried you were gonna walk in here and be like, uh, "What is?" What is this zany room you're in? Anyways, listen. It is a carnival show. It is a carnival. It's very carny. <laughs> but, but it's like, <laughs> it's, I don't know. It's very carny. It's, it's very talk, carny. Of, talk about like self-expression. This is like another sort of platform for you to express yourself. Kind of is. Like your, your uh, VHS collection here and like your your posters and your flags. Like, Did you say VHS? I almost forgot to put on your favorite movie of oh, all Oh, see, that's going to be time. distracting, though. That's why I'm, really? I'm a bit worried. Is that on? Oh, the volume is on. Oh, yeah. yeah. There you go. Will that really distract you? I'll try not. You're to... totally going to... Life of Brian. Monty this, Python's Life of Brian. Best movie. a woman movie. with very good taste in comedy. <laughs> yes. And you know what else I have? I, I might be able to, like, even quote back a lot of these scenes. Have you seen that? I might. Oh, cool. Mm-hmm. Yes. Ah. <gasps> Life of Brian. Oh man, I might be able to lip sync some of these scenes. Get out. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. That's like me. I, uh, delirious. You know what I mean? Yeah, delirious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I uh, yeah, I used to quote that all the time. Yeah. It's uh, it's one of those weird things, right? There's a moment for your favorite thing. There's always a moment for it. Mm-hmm. Um, what I was gonna ask though is, at, you know, growing up, what was that like? Like, what did you? I didn't feel like I fit in anywhere, mm-hmm. you know, for a number of reasons. But did you feel like you fit in? I think my whole life I've I've felt this paradox between I, I fit in everywhere and nowhere at once. And I don't know if that's a universal human experience. I feel like everybody on some level feels like they do and they don't belong. Right. But I always felt like I had figured out social vibing i had figured out how to win people at an early age okay and that just became sort of my my self-defense mechanism for the for my life up until now where it was just like how read a situation read a room read a person know how best to befriend them to create good positive vibes right and to fit in just assimilate nice and easy you know how'd you do that with comedy well, usually with comedy, with, I don't know, with charm, just uh, a lot of the fundamentals of improv, of yes and. When you speak to somebody in conversation, if you yes and a conversation with people, right. they grow to like you. It's like You just yeah. don't shut down any of their ideas. You take whatever they say and you build on it. You like acknowledge that you heard them by asking a question that relates to what they just said or like a comment about what they just said. It's all kind of simple mathematics sometimes when, yes. you, when you break it down. Yes. And, and now I sound like a sociopath. <laughs> you're right. Yeah. Right. No, no, no. It's true, though. Improv, for me, taught me tons, right? Like, communication is about listening, not talking. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, being making other people look good. 
don't make it about you. Mm -hmm. You know, have a nice broad reference of things that, you know, are beyond the bro thing. Mm -hmm. Because I was totally one of those bro guys in high school. So I get what you're saying. Sure. Mm -hmm. And so, so while I was sort of developing that talent for for just assimilating and and befriending people it was also this self-defense mechanism that was like i'm this is what i'm going to use to uh keep that distance between people you know what i mean like i felt like i could belong to everybody but nobody knew who i was truly because i was hiding so many things everything that i was doing was just an effort to to survive and to be friends with everybody and just to make it Right. Just to read what they want from me, what the most ideal me is for them and this current situation, and to play that part as best as I can. Right. And so that's a really alienating, that's a really internally alienating feeling where you're like, I can't tell how much of me in this situation is meant to just appease other people and how much of this me is authentically me, just relaxed me, hanging out, being myself. So that's a lot of psychology to undo at 33 years old. I'm still pulling apart. Like how much, how much lip service am I paying people? How insincere am I being with a lot of the things that I say? Right. And and how much of it is, just figuring out who am I? Who yeah. am I? Right. You know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I get it for sure. I, you know, that's kind of the quest, right? If you're you're looking to who you are, most of the time we have no idea. You know, this person it's different every, almost every day. You're a work in progress. I'm a work in progress. We're all trying to figure out what we're doing here, mm-hmm. right? And, uh, yeah, you got to self-reflect. You got to do a lot of work. Sometimes you want to distract yourself a lot, like I know we all do. Yeah. Um, you ever do therapy? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. How's that, uh, How's that been experience great. been? great. Yeah. It's been awesome. Yeah. I mean, my first my first therapist, while I was first coming to terms with thing and things and coming out, she was a bit, she was good, but she was manipulative about money. Oh, really? Yeah, it was oh, one of those sucks. things where I was like, I can't afford to do a hundred dollars every week. I'm on a comedian's budget, mm-hmm. four hundred a month. That's nuts. I can't keep up with this. Right. And she would always say, "Well, how seriously are you taking your mental health?" And at the time, I didn't realize that for like the manipulative red flag that that is like. Well, I guess if you're not willing to spend a hundred dollars every week, right. then you don't care about yourself. And I was like, "But I, I want to care. <laughs> I want to care about myself." Oh man. Yeah. So, That's but this terrible. one, um, I've never met him in person. It's been all Zoom. Really? Uh, yeah, we've been seeing each other for like a year and a half now, and he's he's awesome. He's so he's also he's practical. So it's like a lot of cognitive behavioral stuff where it's like when you feel like this, what can you what practices can you put into place to to feel better? Mm-hmm. How can you like overcome this with mental exercises or, you know, ways you mind, of thinking? Yeah, do you mind me asking, you know, what some of those exercises are? Cuz I that, listen, I need help. <laughs> <laughs> um there was he sent me i'll be able to dig it up through my emails and holy shit i should probably know this by heart and be able to kind of practice it but Mm -hmm. things have been uh oh see this is the sermon on the mount scene (laughs) you are good this This is the only depiction of jesus in the whole movie and this is what they caught so much shit about for having jesus in this movie but the the crazy thing is the loophole that monty python uh, um, used yeah. was that Jesus in this is like they treat him with reverence. He's Jesus. He stands up there and he's just delivering. It's almost word for word his like Bible, the Sermon on the Mount. And then it zooms out, and the people are the ones who are fucking idiots and losing their minds. Right. See, he's like he's not goofy. He's not silly. He's he's just he looks his like speech. legit Jesus. Yeah, <laughs> legit white Jesus. Well, what, <laughs> <laughs> legit white we <laughs> it's Jesus. <laughs> And yeah. and so that was the interesting right. thing. I've I've watched so much like director's cut back interview t- uh, like debates. They debated archbishops on these late night talk shows. Right. These comedians, and it's just it was so ridiculous. Wow, you really I love do, this scene. You do know this movie, really yeah? Well, huh? These people can't hear him. The mom's like, "Speak up!" Hold on. Let me see. Oh, I can't hear a bloody thing. You're good. 
Let's go to Stoney. Let's go to Stoney. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Brian. Will you be quiet? Don't pick your nose. Don't pick your nose. I wasn't picking it, woman. I was scratching it. And then he calls you him Big Nose. Don't you swear my wife. <laughs> I was only asking if I turn the volume down, can you voice the whole thing? Can you do the voiceover? <laughs> um, oh, man. Can you voice the whole thing? Can you do the voiceover? Um, oh, man. The specifics of oh, it. Oh, my God. I remember uh, one of my favorite lines is coming up. He's like, what was that? Oh, I don't know. I was talking to Big Nose. He goes, what? He said, <laughs> yeah, blessed are the big... cheesemakers. He goes, blessed are the cheesemakers? Well, What's so special about the cheesemakers? Shit, I was like a second behind. Oh. Turn it down. So the line is, this is my favorite. This is why this is the genius of Monty Python in this line. Yeah. This resonates so hardcore with me. Because while it's all ridiculous and it's all silly, yeah. it's still like a pretty good scathing um, commentary on religion and misinterpretation of scripture and shit like that. And yeah. how people can all read the same thing and then go off in five different directions about the interpretation of it. And so yeah. that, that little line there, he's like, what did he say? And he's like, blessed are the cheesemakers. And the woman goes... <laughs> What's so special about the cheesemakers? <laughs> and the guy goes, well, it's not meant to be taken literally, dear. It just refers to all manufacturers of dairy products. <laughs> 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 uh, I love, I just think that's so genius. To take something so silly. Right. But also there's like a statement they're making about how people just interpret whatever in right. the Bible. I can't believe you know it. Word for word. Word for word. Like legit. You were quoting it. There's so much. The stoning scene is next. That's so funny. Wow. All right. See, this is what I'm talking I know, about. I know. I'll turn we it can't. Off. I'll turn yeah, it yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll turn it off. <laughs> I love this movie <laughs> so much. You love this movie way too much. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. That's my. That movie is my number one obsession. I love that movie. Oh, listen. For anybody who missed it, it's Life of Brian. Highly recommended by. Turn it over. Oh, Ninety no. degrees. Wait, this way. Do you mean that way? Turn no, no, no. Like Flip it way? back. Oh, Turn shoot. It. Wait, that Flip way? Flip it. Turn it. Pop it. There this you way? go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there that's go. it. <laughs> Listen, you uh, do you have uh, a record player? I don't. Do you have My a VHS dad player? did. Oh. No. My dad had a record player and I broke it somehow. Uh, it's not hard to do. Yeah. yeah. I think it was the just little old. needle. They, they just were not very durable. I can't remember what we were talking about before the Mon Monty Python thing. We were talking about uh, fitting in. Oh, yeah, I gotta, yeah, I'm trying yeah. to keep it on the rails. Yeah, see? I, I knew that was not a you good idea. Me. You totally <laughs> warned me. All right, yeah, so so growing up, you said you were uh, kind of like a jockey uh, bro dude type of deal, right? Mm -hmm. And then at what point did you realize that wasn't you? What At what point did you find your identity? Because, you know, I think for everyone growing up, it's a challenge in mm. different ways. Like, I know for me, um, what about for yourself? So, I, I've i already kind of described I uh, the whole people-pleasing impulse, right? right? So, that's right. who I was growing up. And so, um, when I first, like, questioned my gender and was starting to sort of explore it, I, like, kept it in a box. I, like, compartmentalized it. Nobody knew about it. I was afraid of it. I was like, Jesus, whatever screwed up fucked up shit this is mm -hmm. you're taking it to your grave buddy like, really no one's allowed to know this yeah because everybody like growing up it's one of those things where i don't i don't feel any resentment for anybody who did this because they always meant well right but everybody who would always be like oh you're 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 a little lady killer aren't you you're gonna grow up you're gonna make you're gonna make some woman really happy mm -hmm. are you gonna be just like your dad I just wanted to make everybody around me happy. I right. just wanted to live up to these crazy expectations for me where they're like, you're going to be a doctor someday. You're going to – all the women are going to be draped all over you. You're going to be a real man's man. And I just wanted everybody to approve of me. I right. just wanted – yeah. Especially Your parents especially or, or – Oh, how? yeah, my parents especially. But, right. like, it was it was family members by extension and – yeah, anything I could do to stay on top. And right. I have a lot of siblings, too. So there was this inherent... How many? I hate to say it, four. Four siblings. Wow. Yeah, and I was second youngest. Right. And so there was this in inherent... When you're in a big family like that, uh, usually you receive the most attention when either something's very wrong right. or when something's very right. 
Mm-hmm. So that kind of inherently, by nobody's fault, just breeds this sort of uh, atmosphere of competition a little bit. Right. You know? And right. I was like, I was kind of a golden child. I was an overachiever. I was sick at sports. Right. I got good grades, no no problem, no effort. Right. So I just wanted to make everybody, I just wanted to be everybody's number one. Mm-hmm. And so stuff like that, the gender confusion was like, no one is going to like this. So right. you got to fucking die. Put it with away. It. Put yeah. that in, yeah, just let it, put it in a cough and let it die. Yeah. 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 And so it was just, it was like that for, for 20 plus years of like engaging in it, indulging in it off to the side as this shameful act this perversion right that it would be like okay tonight no one's gonna know i'm gonna fucking put on a dress and hang out in my room and play starcraft or something right, right, <laughs> just right. like have a relaxed time in a dress and then and then just put it in a box and fucking forget about it and go to my girlfriend's place and fuck her silly and just you know yeah so it was a lot of that living in two universes two worlds yeah right and right. so, okay, so long, so you asked what the turning point was? was that I guess it? so, yeah, at one point where you're like, fuck it. Yeah, it was, um, a lot of my relationships were breaking down because even though I did love the person that I was with, mm-hmm. I had this secret that I couldn't tell them, and it was, it was subtly poisoning the relationship. Right. Like, I didn't want to marry. trust you and honesty yeah. is the benchmark, not benchmark, but the, one of the. Foundations. Yeah, foundations. Yeah. Yeah. Like I really couldn't I I just there it was sucks. Yeah. And I knew thankfully I didn't do I didn't marry any of the the girlfriends that I'd been dating for a long time that I sincerely loved. Right. Because I knew like I can't what a horrible thing to 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 do to like raise a family and to marry this person and 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 it's not fair to anybody. It's not fair to them. It's right. not fair to me. Right. So I just sort of subtly knew that everything had a shelf life. And then eventually at like 29 years old, I realized I had descended into these the patterns of self-destructive behavior. I was doing reckless shit. I was hooking up with people that I had no business hooking up with who were like dangerous. Really? Who were untrustworthy. I had sort of the way that I'd compartmentalize things. This was just this this side of me that had a death wish was like, I don't give a fuck at this point. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like I'm just, I'm, I'm such a gross, evil, shameful person that I might as well just like, who cares? Get it. Yeah. 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 Just abuse yourself and take yourself for granted. Right. Mm -hmm. So I kind of hit, there was a point where I hit rock bottom where I was like, I I don't want to (laughs) die. I don't want to live. Did you think you were going to die at one point? I, I kind of, not to be dramatic but yeah i kind of i was like this is i'm going down a dark road right and it's not gonna get any better this isn't this isn't leading to any this is gonna end in some tragedy right you know right right and so that was the point that i was like i gotta tell somebody i gotta tell somebody one person who'd you tell uh my gay uncle in san francisco oh really yeah yeah, I think he was the first person I came out to, pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then he was like, yeah, he was like, oh, my God, uh, I'll pay for your flight down to San Francisco. Let's just spend some quality time. Just come hang out for a week and, like, and just relax. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, if you want to get a makeover done, I have a friend who does that stuff. Let's just normalize it for a week. Right. Which was so mind-blowing to me. Right. And so we did. I went out there and like he organized this this makeover with like a hairdresser that he had and I got to like go shopping and shit and like live kind of a female fantasy for a week mm-hmm. and to have him be there and be like all of this is perfectly okay. Right. Was just pretty eye opening. You must have felt like ten feet tall that week. Oh yeah. 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 Your self esteem must have been like a record high, you know. Where is your uncle now? Still in San Francisco. You got still a tight relationship? Yeah, pretty tight. Yeah. Pretty tight. One of those things where like you can you can phone them up at any time and like and catch up. Right, kind of like. right. Yeah. Those are the best relationships where yeah. you don't have to worry. You you just know. Mm-hmm. You know, some people you have the, I you know, they have the relationship where you worry that they're going to be sl- they feel slighted if you didn't call them for a couple of weeks or months, but 
those rock solid mm-hmm. relationships that really mean something are the ones where yeah, you just pick up the phone and they're just like, oh, it's so great to hear your voice. Yeah, you know, yeah, those are the the most special people are those those people who you can call anytime and you know you're not obligated to do anything. Mm-hmm. I love that the obligation a relationship free from obligation right is or expectation is that or expectations yeah hundred percent right, right right I just saw you take another sip of your bevy. Uh, would you like mm-hmm. another? Yeah. <laughs> that the next one is one of my favorites. Okay. If not, well, my mojito. The mojito is my favorite. Okay. Cocktail, All right. Right. I like a mojito. Yeah. This one is has mojito esque qualities to it. All right. Mm-hmm. All right. Give me a second. You're. What? I'm phoning. This is a, this is tell, Al Val. This is a phone. I don't know if you uh, recognize this. Are you phoning upstairs? Calling in my <laughs> beverage. <laughs> I'm not leaving this room. Once I'm in here, I'm in here. I'm so fascinated by. One second. Let me see if I can do this. I hope she's by the phone. If not, this whole thing's a wash. Ah, you picked up. <sighs> Thank God. All right, listen. I need you to do me a favor. Al Val and I are done our tropical itches. Can you make us the missionary's downfall that's in the fridge? All you gotta do is put it on the blender, throw in that mint, and then there's two. there are two little garnishes, two little mint garnishes. Once you're done blending for 40 seconds with ice, just put the, put the garnish on top and you're good to go. That's a good woman right there. Oh my God, yeah, the best. See that? Okay, top five movies. Monty Python's Life of Brian, two with Snatch, three Hot Ride, three... Wait, four. I can't even count. <laughs> four, Super Bad. Five, Ninja Turtles. Two, Secret of the Ooze. That one's interesting to me. Why Ninja Turtles? Two, Secret of the Ooze. Why you round out the five with that? Man, because I've always been such a huge Ninja Turtles fan. Yeah. And that was one of those things from, like, childhood. That was my favorite childhood movie. Right. And it stuck with me. I think it's just, it's nostalgic. It's it's warm, and I can come back to it. And it's... uh right. Plus, it has one of my favorite jokes of all time. What's that? No matter what. What's that? Best joke ever. So Raphael is um, being held. He's he's being uh, he's a prisoner in some junkyard. They're going to like get him. The rest of the turtles. Right. And they're sneaking around this junkyard, and they're in the shadows and they're flipping around and hiding behind shit. And one of them goes, "It's quiet." And another one goes, "Yeah, a little too quiet." And then they kind of move up a little bit more. And one of them is like, yeah, it's it's empty in here. And one of them is like, yeah, a little too empty. And then they sneak up a little closer. And then they see Raphael like tied up to a post and, and like bound and gagged and stuff. And one of them goes, there's Raph. And then Mikey goes, yeah, a little too Raph. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's such a silly joke. But as a, as a kid... I remember that was one of those things that like popped me into consciousness to be like, I got that. Right. Ah! Ah! Just right. losing my mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's clever. Rule of threes. I think it was like a be- It's a beautiful joke. Right, 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 right. Yeah. And I guess your top five albums. I always just ask because it gives me a little insight into you know music and movies say a lot about a person, right? Oh boy. So her top five albums in no particular order: Ratatat, Magnifique. The Black Keys, El Camino, Led Zeppelin, Mothership, uh, Guns N' Roses, Appetite for Destruction. And your fifth, you really think of Rage Against the Machines, Battle for Los Angeles, classic. Yeah. Yeah. That one was a bit tougher to come up with my top, top five. top five? Yeah. Yeah. Ratatat is my favorite band. Right. So good. Appetite for Destruction is such a good album. I love Guns N' Roses so much. Really? Who's your, out of the, do you, are you an Axel kind of girl or are you a like, slash kind of girl i'm a slash kind of girl really? i i read slash's biography i haven't read much i don't know if there's one from axel rose and like axel's axel's really clever too but you know from a distance obviously i don't know these two people but right. like but you, you have, have more access to slash slash has done way more interviews than easily. axel right yeah uh well listen uh val I have something for you here in my my little beer fridge. I have two things. <gasps> I don't know if you, you do. You have one of these already. This is a <gasps> Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Hot Wheels, circa I 
very, 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 very far back. Wait, I got to take the price tag off. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Taking that off, you know, because you have been my gracious guest. Trevor! At least I could do. All right, I'll toss it to you. Yeah, yeah. All right, and then next, do you see this? Holy this shit. Is slash buckle pop. That's for me? Of course. That's so awesome. Yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. Oh, shoot, the price is on that one. <laughs> Yes, I spotted the price. Oh, man, you really went all that's a, out. That's a sin. You're not oh, supposed my to. goodness. Oh, my gosh. This you one is really cool. Went, this is so sweet. I don't want to part with this one. Then keep it. No, because I love you. Oh, man. Like, oh, this is so sick. You didn't see that coming, did I, you? I did not. And you, like, you gambled, too, on, like, the, are you a slasher or an axle girl? Am I girl? good? Am I good? Would, would I have uh, screwed, would I have totally... Throwing yes. things off if I said I was an Axel person? Nah, not at all. Are you oh, supposed wait. to keep these in the box or can I take it out? No, I don't know. You do whatever you want. Listen, do I whatever like, you like. I like it. it. Yeah, it's yes. for me. Oh, you can do whatever you want. Yeah, but I don't, I don't care. I, she has one too. One. Look, it's right there. See? Vanna White. Who's that? It's Vanna, Vanna White. White, but Ooh. she looks just like Vanna White. You do? Yes. <laughs> I don't know Anyways, that, I was definitely his game show assistant for a little while. All right. Um, what have you got? Slash. Yeah. <laughs> the after party begins now. So okay. how can people find you, Al Val? Um, I'm on all social media at Al Val Comedy. You can always look up Al Val Comedy on Instagram, Twitter, uh, TikTok. Close the door. What do you think this is? All hey. those things. Oh, well. Can you do that for me? Look at it. I don't want to slam Close, it. Uh, you know, oh, you're a sweetheart right to the end. I don't want to slam it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, listen. Cheers. Cheers. How about my very first guest? You're wonderful. You're a great human being. Likewise. To you. All right. This is a missionary's downfall. Enjoy. Oh, cool. Is that good or what? I love that. You normally, want some? Normally I hate mint, but that like. Ah. Well, you put the mint in the blender. Yeah. You blend it up uh -huh. with the peach schnapps, chunky pineapple, uh, rum, white rum, and. Uh, Lime juice, okay, and honey syrup, which it's, is like half honey, half warm water. Love all of it. It's good the sweetness. Yes, it needs to be sweet. Mint is. Uh, I don't understand people's fascination with mint if it's not to like brush your teeth and freshen your breath. <laughs> Why would it. you swallow toothpaste? It's weird. Yeah. It's very weird. But anyways, that kills it. And I just want to say thank you for having me. I feel really honored to be like episode one. This, the gifts are so unnecessary. You've treated me like royalty. And I'm just, and I'm super grateful. You're so, a special person, you. so you deserve it. Thank you. Keep doing what you're doing. Oh, shit, I punched the mic. <laughs> we got to start again, dude. We can't end on that. Do it again, do it again, do it again. Do it again. <laughs> what, this? No, say what you, I don't know. Anyways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks, Al Val. Thank you for having me. You're the best. Hormones are pretty wild, the changes that have happened in my body. It's pretty awesome. I'm embracing them. I think they're great. I like my skin. Yeah, all that stuff. But I still have. It's only been a year. And so there's still some testosterone and estrogen in my blood fighting for supremacy at all times. I have an angry, hetero married couple in my body. <laughs> Just always at odds. The other day, I left the toilet seat up. I gave myself the silent treatment for four hours. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.